Hold on to your helmets, Viking fans, because Vinland Saga Season 2, Episode 15 is here to rock your world. We open on our imprisoned hero Gardar, gazing up at the moon and probably wondering why he didn't choose a safer career path like knitting or flower arranging. Meanwhile, the fearless and fiery Arnheide marches towards the mercenary camp, determined to free her man. But before she can even get close, she's ambushed by Snake, who's clearly having a bad day. Fox tries to calm him down, but Snake's grumpiness is through the roof, and he's not having any of it. Turns out, Snake's crew got replaced for security reasons, and he's pretty salty about it. He calls Kettle's wife a greedy hag and seems ready to start a bar fight until he catches sight of Arnhide. Suddenly, he's struck dumb by her stunning beauty, and I can't say I blame him. Arnhide begs to see Gardar, but Snake's having none of it. He's still mad about his team getting replaced, and he couldn't care less about Gardar's injuries. But our heroine isn't one to give up easily, and she convinces a soldier to escort her to see her hubby. This soldier, let's call him Mr. Tall, Dark, and Handsome, is clearly smitten with Arnhide and would probably do anything to impress her. He agrees to take her to Gardar, and the two of them stroll into the camp like they're on a romantic date. The other mercenaries are baffled by this turn of events, but Arnhide manages to convince them that she's just there to treat Gardar's wounds. When she finally sees him tied up and beaten, she can barely contain her emotions. The love between these two is as clear as the fjords of Norway, and we can't help but root for them. Gardar pleads with Arnheid to cut his ropes and let them go home, but the other mercenaries aren't having it. They tease Arnheid mercilessly, but she manages to keep her cool and focus on treating her man. As she sobs over him, promising never to let him go again, we're reaching for the tissues ourselves. The soldiers are in a sour mood, and things are tense as they debate who should keep watch over the escaped duo. The soldier who vouched for Arnheid is starting to regret it, especially when the others suggest that one man is enough to watch them. But, alas, he feels responsible since he brought her there. As the soldier approaches Arnheid to check on her, things take a turn for the worse. Gardar, the wild and unpredictable dog, goes into a frenzy and bites the soldier's jugular. The blood flows, the soldier draws his sword, but alas, it's too late. He dies, falling onto a nearby table and leaving everyone horrified. The tension builds as the soldiers rally to find the escaped duo. Snake is furious, and he's not messing around. He rallies his troops to search for them and make sure they don't get away with their actions. But things are not so straightforward. As the episode jumps ahead in time to daybreak, Thorfinn and Einar sit in silence, contemplating the chaos that has erupted around them. They both agree that war is wrong, but Thorfinn feels like a hypocrite since he used to be a soldier himself. Einar reassures him that Arnheid doesn't know him as a warrior but Thorfinn can't shake off the feeling that he's not living up to his potential. We see Thorfinn wrestling with his inner demons as he questions his own morality, or lack thereof, in the wake of all the bloodshed he's caused. Einar, ever the wise and patient listener, reminds Thorfinn of his recent ponderings about the possibility of eliminating slavery and war from the world. It's a noble thought, to be sure, but easier said than done. Thorfinn dives into the complexities of war and slavery, explaining how one often leads to the other. He laments the fact that his fellow Norsemen view war as a means to an end, as a way to earn respect and status in their society. It's a vicious cycle, he explains, and one that he's not sure how to break. But Einar doesn't let Thorfinn off the hook that easily. He challenges him to think beyond the status quo, to imagine a world where swords aren't necessary for survival. Thorfinn admits that he doesn't know how to eliminate war from the entire world, but he's determined to start with one village. It's a small step, but a necessary one. As Thorfinn opens up to Einar about his nightly visions of the people he's killed tormenting him, the emotional weight of his burden becomes palpable. But rather than wallow in self-pity, he's determined to make amends in any way he can. He vows to rebuild the homes he's destroyed, grow more crops than he's trampled, and do whatever else it takes to make things right. The conversation takes a turn when Einar questions how they'll defend their peaceful village from the inevitable Viking raids. Thorfinn realizes that simply fighting for peace isn't enough, they need to break the cycle of violence altogether. And that's when he reveals his vision of a land beyond the sea, a place untouched by war and slavery, where people can live in peace without fear. It's a dream that seems almost too good to be true, and Einar is quick to point out the many obstacles in their way. But Thorfinn remains steadfast in his belief that this place exists, that it's out there somewhere waiting for them. Thorfinn daydreaming about what lies on the other side of the ocean. A blonde woman is seen trudging through the snow, lamenting how the other side of the ocean is probably just as crappy as where she is now. It's like going from the frying pan into the freezer, but with more wars and slave traders. But wait, Thorfinn snaps out of his dream and spills the beans to Einar about a magical land far beyond the horizon. Einar is skeptical at first, but Thorfinn insists it's real because he heard it from a guy who heard it from a guy who heard it from Leif Erikson. 
That's like hearing about a party from a friend of a friend, but with more Vikings and longboats. Einar is giddy with excitement at the thought of exploring this new land, but Thorfinn reigns on his parade with a dose of reality. They would need to take a bunch of outcasts with them, like a real-life version of the Island of Misfit Toys. Plus, they have no idea where it is exactly. It's like playing hide-and-seek with a continent. Suddenly, the sound of hooves interrupts their discussion, and in rides Fox and his band of merry mercenaries. They draw their swords, ready to rumble. But Einar and Thorfinn just stare at them like they're the weird kids in class who always bring in their pet rocks for show and tell. The mercenaries ignore them and start tearing apart the shed, looking for Gardar. Einar is confused, but Thorfinn is quick to deduce that Gardar must have escaped. As the episode comes to a close, we see Snake sitting in Sverkel's home, waiting for Gardar to be found. It's like a game of cat and mouse, but with more swords and less cheese. Overall, Vinland Saga Season 2, Episode 15, is a rollercoaster ride of adventure, humor, and suspense. It's like Indiana Jones meets Game of Thrones, but with more Vikings and fewer dragons. Thanks for watching, drop a comment below and let us know what you thought of the episode. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more thrilling Vinland Saga content.